Hi everyone, it's Saturday the 18th of June and it's almost 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, I've got a bunch of uh, dumpster dived items that I'd like to uh, show you. It's all electronic stuff. Um, from the same dive I got the street light from in the previous video. In fact that was over two nights because I went back the next night and I'm planning, if I don't fall asleep, to go back tonight because I haven't checked it. Didn't get to check it last night. Too hot. <laughs> 33 degrees it hit here in Norfolk. Um, and now today we've got drizzly rain and cloud and it's a lot cooler. So we literally went in the space of 24 hours from heat wave to crappy weather. So anywho before we get into this electronic stuff I've just got a few things I want to update you on. Mainly on the Honda PC50 because finally I have some paint. So I've been into Wilco's this afternoon. I've got a couple of bike parts. We'll get to those in a minute as well. Um, but I can only get two cans of this because that's all I had on the shelf. And I got some white for the mud guards, but I don't know if I got gloss white. <laughs> I don't even know if that's gloss. It doesn't matter too much. I'm not that fussed. Um, but yeah, they only had two white as well. That seems to be with their colours. They only have two of each colour on the shelf because I actually looked up the shelf. Sounds weird, doesn't it? Sound look up the shelf, but because the shelves are angled like that, you have to sort of look up and under it to see. But the daft thing is, I only sell, I have like two cans of each colour on the shelf, and I've got stacks of lacquer. But uh, I thought, as I can't get too much colour at the minute, I might as well only just get two cans of lacquer. I have got, and I was a bit daft, I have got some large cans of white primer. Um, which is about eight pounds a can, but I didn't realise Wilco did white primer in this size can, which was a lot cheaper. But I don't think it really matters, you know, because I'd have probably wanted more of these cans in white primer than I would have the bigger ones. So <clears throat> yeah, I want to do the mud guards white because they're originally white. Um, I think they're the only white parts to do, and that's just the frame. The forks, swing arm and rear shocks, there's really not a lot to one of these bikes to paint. <laughs> so I might need sort of like six, maybe eight cans of orange. I have had a look on places like Amazon and eBay. Yes, you can get the whole spray paint on there, but I'm not paying $10.99 for a can, a 300ml can. And I can sit on that and spin. Um, I know people have got to make money these days but that just takes the mickey when I can walk down to Wilco's from here and get it for $5.99 a can basically half the price but basically what people have done they've bought, gone into shops like that bought it and put it on eBay at double the bloody price no thank you anyway the other day I actually bought two more mountain bikes well initially I was only going to collect one Mainly because I didn't know the other one was still available. I couldn't find the ad. I could only find our um, um, chat. Um, it was a rally mountain bike for 15 quid. Need work. Front suspension. Um, quite a nice bike. I've got it downstairs at the minute. Um, but I didn't like the grip shift setup. I'm not keen on grip shifts anyway. But I'm going to stick with it because I want something different. Um, but what they've done. They've put a left handed or a left side grip shift on the right side so when you shift gears it's actually in reverse now to what it should be so I've got some seven speeds here I'm pretty certain I hope <laughs> yeah actually yes that bike is a um, 21 speed so put these ones on at some point not today and the Apollo racer that I bought a few weeks ago that I've been saying needed tires I finally got a couple I couldn't find the um, you know the gum coloured ones to be more uh, age precise, age exact, whatever you want to call it. But these will do, they're a lot better than the tyres that are currently on it because they're falling to pieces. Like a lot of the old gum wall tyres do, they all flake and go bad over time. Um, I've also found some 20 inch tyres for the shopper project I've got over at Mum's. Um, 
I you know, bought that damn dump when I bought the British Eagle that I use over there and the Peugeot bike for parts for the Peugeot bike that I've got here and what was it? Three bikes and I think I worked out that they actually cost me £6.60 each because he charged me 20 quid for all three um, so if that maths is wrong you can blame the calculator because that's what I use to do it because I suck at maths <laughs> Um, yeah, the tyres were completely shot on this little folding bike. I bought it because I'd never heard the brand before. It's a Sinzia. And I typed that word into Google Translate. And apparently it's Italian. Um, so I'm guessing it's an Italian bicycle. And I'm pretty certain it is from like another European country or a foreign country because the front brake is actually on the left, not the right. British bikes, front brake is always on the right, and your rear brakes are always on the left. But if you could go to countries where they drive on the right hand side of the road, the brakes are reversed for some reason. I don't know why they do that. <coughs> um, but weirdly, I think it, it looks worse than it is. Chain is a bit tight, might change the chain, it depends where I take the wheel off to change the tyres on. I'll check it over because it might just be it's a bit rusty and gone stiff. I have soaked it in WD-40 just to try and loosen things up. I'm going to take a can of my oil over there. My spray oil to oil it properly. But uh, yeah, I actually bought those on Marketplace. 15 quid for four. They're actually BMX tyres but they'll fit. Yeah, it fits a lot better than what's currently on there. I daren't actually, well I tried inflating the front tyre and the tube's knackered. And I actually took one look at the back tyre and just went, nope, I'm not pumping it up. <laughs> it's that bad. Anywho, I'll put these over to one side actually. And I think if I can just squeeze past you for a minute. I just want to squeeze and get to the fridge and get a drink. Because even though it's cooled down outside, these flats, especially these upper ones, because I'm on the top floor, they take a while to cool down. So it's still quite, uh, it's not uncomfortably warm in here, but it is still warm. Anyway, how are we doing for shot? I think we're actually quite good there. Right. Well, the other thing I've been doing for the last few days is actually having a good clear out and a good sort out. So, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Let's start with probably the most boring thing. It's just this little connection box. I've actually put the lid on upside down because that should be the bottom, I think. Um, but yeah, I just thought I would make a nice sort of connection box for something. A project box, even, for electronics. I know it's got three big holes in the um, top or bottom there, depending on which way around you put the front. But uh, yeah, that's why I grabbed that. So, there's nothing in it, it is just an empty box. Um, I also grabbed this, which I actually had to fix because I pried all this open and bent it. And, um, but it's a wireless door control. I didn't realise that. Um, you connect a 9 volt battery, so you take all of this off and it all pops off. And there's just a little 9 volt battery that sits in the back of this and a little, I presume, just a little circuit that sends a signal to the main door control. <clears throat> Which I don't think I've actually found in there. Um, but when I put it together, I haven't done the switch properly so it doesn't click. I've got to tighten the four nuts up. So I might do that later in the video, I've got the tools here. If you're wondering how you get that plate off, it's an iron key that goes into each of these tiny little holes. It took me ages to figure that one out. A lot longer than I'd like to admit, actually. <laughs> Anywho. That's better. So, you may remember in a previous video, probably from a couple of months ago or something, I got a load of um, intruder alarm control boxes and things. Well there's the wall box that sits outside. Um, 
I don't know why I grabbed the lid. I don't really want the whole thing. Well, I think I grabbed it because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I mean, oh, the lid is actually hooked on. Hang on. You know, surprisingly, there's not much dirt in any of this. There's more dust in it. There's actually probably more dirt in this alarm box than there was that street light. Well, the main reason I picked this up is because A, I'd like the strobe at the bottom, and B, I want the siren. <laughs> I've actually noticed this has got like um, tamper switches here as well, so burglars couldn't climb up the ladder and, you know, take the cover off to disarm the alarm because that'll trigger it. Because that is actually connected. Yeah, to this wire, so it goes to this, and there's another one. Where is it? Right here. Right by this screw. So I presume when you put the screw in, when you screw the cover on, it pushes against that. And as soon as you undo that screw, that's what happens, and it'll trigger the alarm. Which I thought was actually quite smart. So, you know, thinking of uh, every possible eventuality, I suppose. I don't know why I've got all this wire just wrapped around this. Oh, actually, this switch is going down to that switch, which goes into this connector block, which is going back down this cable. This cable would be going out of the back here. And that one will go off to the main control box. And I still have all the main control boxes. I've not gotten rid of them yet. I just can't really decide what I want to do with them. Anywho, another um, door thingy, door security doicky. I actually thought, I don't think it is, but I thought that was a camera, but I think it's just a spot for a camera to perhaps go. No, it's like, um, like you go on a block of flats like this, you come up to it, you ring whatever door you want. I don't know why they needed one of this, because there's literally only two here. I can't read what that one was, but it's literally just town council. I don't know why you'd... The buttons all seem to work. Um, there is a bit for this that I forgot, and it plugs onto that, but I can't imagine I would actually use this for anything, so... I don't think it will matter. Well, no. The top bit is actually loose. How is that fixed in then? I can see a screw there, but I don't think it's a screw that's holding it in. Oh, the little modules! Well, that's a clever idea. It's actually modules. And some wires. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I just thought that would be some, something maybe interesting. Maybe take it apart and uh, see what you actually know. It won't sit properly because they've actually bent it. You know what they're like when they're refurbishing places? They just literally rip all the old stuff out. Which uh, I suppose can make salvaging, if you want to call it that, a pain in the backside. Not that there's much I could salvage off of that, I don't think. I just thought it'd be interesting to take apart and have a look at. Right. I don't normally like light fittings like this, but I thought, oh, it's a cute little light, isn't it? One of them double D lights. And again, they couldn't be bothered to use the security screwdriver to take this off, so they just broke the lid off. And did try super gluing it all back together, but it did not work. Um, I have got a double D tube that will fit that, so I'll have to try and see if that works one day. Right. Next up, a load of smoke alarm bits and bobs or fire alarm, including my favourite bit, the sander, which I actually had to go back for the base for, because none that's here when he first went diving, only picked this bit up, and then I realised... I saw that, but it didn't cross my mind what that was for. 
until like the next day and I was sitting playing with this and I thought oh I know what that red base is for now it's for this <laughs> there we go and it does work I have put these wires across a 12 volt battery because the voltage is actually quite um, broad on this one it is 9 to 28 volts VDC or volts DC I suppose then it's got first sound and second sound and this is actually connected on the first sound and it has that sort of whale siren, siren sound I'll have to sound that in a different video but what I'll also do I'll move this wire over to the second sound it's also got some dip switches here I don't know what they do I've never seen dip switches like these either they don't flick forward and backwards they're actually like little rocker switches but yeah that's in sound too there's also a resistor there I don't know if that's there for a reason if I have to move that or anywho that's for another video maybe I can take that alarm or that sounder out of the burglar alarm we can set that one off as well that'll be around 12 volts um, maybe at some point because I know some of these they have like a little red flashing light as well for a visual alert for the deaf so maybe I'll be able to find one of those as well uh, but what several uh, smoke that actually that's a heat detector that one A1R heat detector I don't know if you can see it in there but you've got your little thermo doicky there I don't know what room that would have been in. But here we've just got two smoke detectors. Now I can't actually get that one off the base, it's stuck on. <laughs> Might be why they actually just pulled this one off the ceiling, but yeah. I've tried. Because they just um, they literally just twist on, but that one doesn't want to run twist. And I can't see any screws this side to undo, so I'm also intrigued to know what's hidden under this heat shrink. Because the other one, that one hasn't got one. Unless that was taken off. But they've got this one, which is another smoke detector, but it's a different brand, it's ADT. And then we've got this one, which I think is a smoke detector. I presume it's a smoke detector. It's great though, because it's a bit like my central heating clock. You connect your wires to this, you put that on the ceiling, I suppose it's done for like a quick change, you know, if one of these sensors fail, they can just come along, twist it off, boop, with a new one, you're done in five minutes. Uh, it's actually some terminals and I have no idea what they would go to. But yeah, I'm pretty certain this one is... Smoke detector, it doesn't say that, this is return to supply for disposal. And I've just realised you can't actually open this one. That should line up like that and push on. I'm just locking to place like that. It'll be up on your ceiling somewhere detecting your smoke. Um, I think these ones, if I actually remember rightly, these ones are infrared or optical. Yeah, optical um, smoke detector. So the smoke would go in there and there'll be a chamber with an infrared beam going across it. That smoke breaks the infrared beam, triggers the alarm. That symbol. And that is also why dust can trigger them. Same with your smoke detector in your house. That's why if you're having any DIY work done, it's a good idea to put um, a cover over it. To stop the damn things going off. Anywho, well, I've got this box and I presume this one, I think something just fell out the bottom, um, I presume this is something to do with the fire alarm, oh I forgot that was in there, <laughs> there go. oh I see, this bit hooks over the bottom so you can actually drop it down, um, now, there is some things that I could actually make use of in here if I wanted to, and that is actually the power supply. Um, I've no idea what this board is for, but we've got a linear transformer here. 230 volts down to 16.5 volts. Which 
conveniently is roughly what a model railway on DC would use. If you look at uh, most of my Hornby adapters, they are 16 volt adapters, so I could use this supply on there, or at least that, because that basically just converts the 16 volts out from this to DC. That's pretty much that is, and probably just dis distributes it elsewhere. Might even cut the voltage down again if there's another rail that requires a different voltage. We've got some LEDs on here. 230 volts on a spanner. I presume that means there's a fault or something if the red light is on. I just realised this we've got another sort of tamper switch at the top there as well. We've got lovely this is a good giveaway to do with a fire alarm if you didn't know because it's got red stuffing glands on it. Which come off quite easily actually. I'm put that back on there so I don't know if I'm sure there's another. Is it this one or was it the other one that's got? Oh it's the other one that's got two on but they're missing them apart. So no, no good. That's the problem with a skip, you know, things can get buried and it looks like they've been ripping the ceilings out as well. There's a, I said, like I said before, that's an old grade 2 listed building. Um, and currently the skip is full of um, not just plaster from the ceilings, but um, that straw stuff that they used to put in the cavity between the floor and the ceiling. I can't remember what they call it, all my pliers still in there. So yeah, I might, because I can't see me ever need using this or doing anything with this itself. So what I might do is just take the power supply out. It's got a fuse on it as well. Oh, it is a ceramic fuse. I thought that was a glass fuse. No. I suppose it would be as it's on the main side. It would be a ceramic fuse, wouldn't it? Ow! showing you that. I don't know how many of these would have been in the building. There was another one in the skip but it was just, I just found this red surround. I didn't find any other bits of it. So this is actually the only whole one apart from that that I've actually managed to rescue. It would be nice if I could find another one of these. Even though technically it is just an ordinary patris, it's just red. But yeah, anyway. I've got this jobby next. Which I'm guessing is the main control box. Maybe that is for the power to supply the whole thing. Or maybe not, because this one's got a big old transformer in it as well. There was no um, no backup batteries in these either, just the wires. So I, I don't know if they were taken out yonks ago. Or if the electrician had took them out and uh, disposed of them himself. I have no idea. And why is there a lump of blue tack on this beeper? I think that's a beeper from the looks of it, yeah. Well, it does look like a little buzzer or something here. Well, I say a little buzzer, it's a big buzzer. Was it that loud and pissing people off that much that they actually stuck a lump of blue tack on it? <laughs> right. It's quite an interesting little circuit board to look at actually. We've got four glass fuses, which are replaceable. I mean, there is things that you could salvage off of this for electronic works, like these um, connectors. You can desolder those. I'm not sure about you know microchips or anything like that. But I have no idea what these are. Uh, ICs do, you can salvage some LEDs, some wires, actually done with four diodes, same as on the other box actually, done exactly the same way. <clears throat> Is that the same? 12th of January 1995, bloody hell. I was just seeing if it's actually got the um, voltage written on it, but not on that sticker at least. 
just looks like it's like a um, test sticker or something. Uh, I suppose the only thing I can do is perhaps put power to this and then put a meter on here and uh, find out what the voltage is. Probably about the same as the other one. Sound alarm, so it can be manually triggered from here, I suppose. Silence the alarm if it goes off. Reset the system. Cancel fault buzzer. I presume that's what this is then, the fault buzzer. And lamp test. So there must be somewhere in there a lamp up on the wall. <laughs> I wouldn't mind finding to be honest to go with this. Now, we haven't got the key either, and somehow this is still in the locked position, so it doesn't actually match. So I don't know if it's moved itself into the lock position or if they managed to break the lock off, but I know for a if I do this, I can shoot. <laughs> now, it will actually close properly, but now I can't lock it. What do you reckon my chances are of being able to stick something in there and pick it? Curiosity is getting to me now. <laughs> I've got anything hanging up that I just could try out of curiosity. And maybe on this point, no, it might just be a generic cheap lock. So that's just uh oh, I'm feeling that one would be too big. I want something small like these. I mean I have actually picked locks in the past using keys that actually fitted. These keys aren't fitting, so I've actually got anything on my keys either, that could, might do it. Let's have a quick play, shall we? That one? No. Tiny little keys here. I don't know what that key is for, but I don't trust it. It's, um, already bent. Nope. Oh. I want to get the lock to work. <laughs> well that lock actually just bolts on. There's a nut on the other side so if I actually wanted to keep it to use it, I could change it because I could find something else to put on there. So if I actually take this bit off, the actual arm to lock it, and then remember where I put the pliers, and then this nut. So, I can do 
that. <laughs> now there's no rock. There's two stuff and glands there. There's the red ones, but as you can see, the um, caps to clamp the wires down have disappeared. But little things like that can get lost in a big old skip, so I'm not too worried about it. I forgot to knock that switch. Yeah, so lots of goodies. I suppose if I got some wire and maybe if I could find some instructions, I could actually set this up somehow with a detector to try and see if I can get something to work. <laughs> So suppose in theory, all I'd have to do is run power to this. That might be all I'd need to do is run power to this. Um, I mean, I wouldn't have to have that to trigger it, would I? In fact, I could use the heat one, because I could just put a um, hot air gun up to it to trigger it. Because it is literally two lives and two neutrals from the looks of it. But I've just noticed there's not a lot of wires connecting to this, not enough for what's here, so... It must connect to this, because there's a lot of connectors without wires on going along this board and I presume that might be powerful I might connect well there's red and black there and red and black there so I'm guessing they may have got cut but I don't know what all these lettering and numbers mean along here so but this is obviously an old system would I be able to find instructions or something online for it um, that's the company, BBC, Fire Protection Limited. After, it's got the most recent area code on it. I think it was 1995 we changed to a five digit area code. So it's got to be after that. Tell you what the zones are. Tells you whether the fire's gone off or if it's got, there's a fault developed. I might be able to do something with it. Make up like a stupid little demonstration board or something. Just out of boredom and just because I could. And why was this stuck to the worktop? be quite heavy though, because even without batteries in these, these are quite heavy. Mainly because these are bell boxes and it's got a big ass, uh, big ass linear transformer in them. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to rig up any, rig up any of the anti-tamper switches or anything, I'm not going to need them. Right. Well, it seems to alternate. Looking at that board, it's got NOC, NC, NOC, NC, NOC, NC. Whatever any of that means. And then we've got here, which is A plus, A plus, A plus, A plus, V plus, and OV. Yeah, so that's power in. That's got to be connected to that then. I am right. So they would have to be reconnected. Hang on a minute. Before it dawned on me how far away I was over there, these wires have got to be connected together. 
That's your plus and minus volts. It doesn't actually say what the voltage is, that's all it says. And you've got all of these along here, which I think could be neutrals because they're black. You've got one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to eight. You've only got four of these, which is A plus. They're all labelled as A plus. So, would I be correct to assume it's maybe what these would connect to? I'm interested now to figure out to see if I can actually get it to do anything. I might put a volume control on that sounder though. <laughs> um, yeah, these are the ones that's got NO, space C, space NC. Yes, yeah, so there's three terminals in each section that's been sectioned out. So you've got your NC, or your NO, your C, and then your NC, whatever that is. Is that, is that actually what these ones are to do with? Maybe those are your brake blast points? I have no idea. Shall I see if I can actually get this to work at some point? Might make for an interesting video. I might have to clean it up though because it's full of dust. Hmm. Well, I've got a connector block there I can steal because it's just for the tamper switch. And I don't, I'm not going to bother with um, reinstalling that. Can't be um, very much voltage because these power wires are actually very thin. Very thin actually. Even. Forgot that was behind. Oh, bananas. I don't think I've got any. Yes, I have. I've got my tea towels here. You reckon Carla will treat them? <laughs> so, note to self don't put your drink can right behind the box that you're moving around. One more. Oi, oi, oi. I've actually had one of them days today, you know, where I've just been clumsy all day. I've just been doing my head in. I hate when I have days like that. I only want to lay it down so I could see what the connections were here. So we have got yellow and black coming out here as well. So black is just ground, in my eyes. Yellow. I'm not sure. Well, there's actually one here labelled healthy. <laughs> and that one, it just says load. So all it's got written on these is just load, and there's two of them. Yellow and red. But as red and black matches red and black and they're twisted together, I assume they go together. That would be for your battery backup. I have a sticky worktop now. There we go. lock now on it so I can't do it by hand. Right, oh, there's one more thing that I wanted to do. Let's try and get into this. Well, I can get into it because I know how to do it. Uh, da, 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 can I remember which hex it was? Yep. This can be a bit fiddly, i found, because you're sort of doing it blind because you can't see the screw. <laughs> so it's just sort of guesswork. I'll re 
loose enough yet. It's got to come up. And then lift off. There we go. So you don't want to undo the screws all the way. You just want to undo them enough so you can lift this off. That's literally all it is. And if I go and get a 9 volt battery and connect it to that, that LED will light up. In fact, there was a charged 9 volt energizer battery already connected on this. And I forgot to put something around that, didn't I, to hold it together. Yeah, what I need to do... is just wind these uh, nuts down a bit more. So it clicks when you press on it. Because as it was, it wasn't pressing. But I just thought this would be a novelty switch for something, that's all. Okay, so maybe I have got to crank these nuts all the way down, because that one's now cranked all the way in. So is that one. I'm not going to jam them down. I'm not going to go until I snug up. These are um, my lock, lock nuts anyway, so... It's a shame the hooligans bent it, getting it off the wall, but... I suppose in their mind, you know, it's all being ripped off to be changed and being skipped. They don't need to be gentle with it, do they? So they just rip it off the wall. You know, they don't think that uh, weird people like me will come along and grab it. Or would even want it. Hopefully that's not going to be too tight now, but it's certainly working a lot better. This is the bit I hope. I'm trying to get all the wires snugged up in there. Out of the way. And then Done it too bloody tight now, haven't I? that ratchet bit is too big. Not enough room. So what I'm going to do is back these out a couple of turns and try again. There is meant to be a car boot sale in town. I've just realised that nut has come loose under there. Give that a whirl. I can hear it clicking. So now Find the screw, there we go. Told you it could be a bit fiddly. Yeah, that's got it. Okay. Now being such a large box, you'd have actually thought. There would have been a bit more to it inside than there is, but no. I didn't even realise these were wireless either. You know, whenever I've seen them up on the wall, I've always thought there was a wire going to them. 
I suppose one of the reasons it's large is to make it easy for people to hit, especially um, wheelchair users. There we go. Like that. Yeah, whichever way I press it, it's clicking now, which is what you need it to do. There we go. Still a shaft, still a crease right across there. I can't get it out. But it's a lot better than it was when I first picked this up. You can see what they did. They've actually wedged something in there. Probably not realising that all you had to do was just stick an iron key in there and undo that. And then you could pop this cover off. Because those screws also um, hold this bit in there. See, it's like a case or case inside a case almost. Quite a weird setup. Maybe I could connect a light to it, you know. I couldn't find the other end of it, so it would work wirelessly. <laughs> because that's all it is, like a big wireless remote control really, isn't it? And I bet the 9 volt battery would last quite a long time as well. Right. I think that is it for this video, guys. Uh, not going to start getting into this one. We'll pull it apart because I doubt I'd use this bit. I might have a project for the other bit though. Um, ah, I see. Oh, that screw is meant to hold it in. It's just uh, popped out, that's all. I bet. I haven't got a Phillips small enough in here, have I? Mm -hmm. That one might be a bit too small. No. He's undoing the screw. Sort of. It's slipping a little bit. You banana! It's just spinning the screw around in there. That one's coming out though. Go way out, it's just at the bottom there. What are these for? Is it actually holding? Ah! I'm surprised that piddly little screwdriver is actually turning these screws, but it is, isn't it? Nope. I might get the screwdriver in there. Okay. So. Ah. So it looks like it's actually two separate, whoops. Modules, so you've got your button module. This actually lights up, you know, for nighttime use. Let's just let's get that out of the way. Hmm. Oh, I see. There's another. That's what's still in there. I might go after that, just so I've got it with it. But there is still one of these in there. I didn't know what it was for. Again, not until I got home when I was actually looking at the back of this. There's another one of them sockets. Then it hit me. Me and I found out what it was. Uh, all those screws it will undo, and then it won't undo these ones. You bugger. No. <laughs> God 
big all big Phillips will work on this one. I hope I don't need that screw because that's just shot around the kitchen somewhere. Well, told you I'm one of them clumsy days today. Bit of time yet? No. I might actually save the rest of this for another video because it does get a bit more interesting. Interesting speaker. I don't know what that coil is. There's a coil up the top here. Yeah. Uh, so I'm presuming that you can customise these because there's no buttons in here. It looks like the other button modules. See? But there's no actual buttons in that one, so I'm presuming you can actually customise the buttons that you want. Bloody vandals, look, I've broken that there, side there. Go find another, let's go find another Phillips. I'm curious, so I'm just gonna go and find another screwdriver. All right, hopefully, I can get the screws with one of these. Oh, that's the battery that was in it. I don't know what the voltage is, I've not tested it, but it was working well, working at least as, as in um, lighting up the LED. All right, so we've got four screws on the front of this. I'll come a bit closer to the camera, I think. So hopefully I can get the four screws with a slightly larger Phillips. I've got another larger one of these, but I don't know where that is at the minute. Could be in here, could be in the bedroom, or it could be hiding somewhere in the lounge. Let me just get these screws out. I want to do it over here so I don't drop them on the floor. Because if I do that, I'll probably never find them again. Yeah, the bit I'm interested in is this up here looks like, like an antenna coil or something. I think that's all that is, just an antenna coil to be honest. Because it's literally just a coiled wire up there that goes down to the circuit board. Um, if I try and pull that out of the way. A lot on the circuit board. There's a couple of pots up this corner that can be adjusted. A um, bunch of electrolytic caps. A little um, IC up in that corner. Could be a, a triple five timer or something. I've got me a magnifying glass in here to enlarge it. But I can. Take the board out if I can find a screwdriver that's going to fit it. I'm not going to use this for anything, so I might as well take it apart and have a look. We'll open up the other bits. We'll open up everything while we're here. We might as well. I've started now, so I'll finish. That's an old saying, and I don't know if anybody will actually remember what that came from. So we've got... 0 0.2 watt 8 ohm speaker. It's raining again. And that is literally the circuit board. Yeah, even out like this, I can't read that. I need to make the fine glass. If I remember, I'll um, take that down and put it in the description. No guarantees, though. If I've forgotten, leave a comment um, reminding me and I'll reply. Over this bit. Can I even get into that? Yes. I need that one. Oh, 
Ooh. Couple of fairly long screws in the back of this. Will I find anything interesting inside? Okay. Ah. There would be one hiding right in the middle there. There we go. Well, there's some components missing. You can see where there's something for an LED there. Is that to like, would that be a white LED so it would light everything up? Is that what that would be there for? Um, we've got a resistor missing as well. I'm not sure what went on there. Possibly a capacitor. Because there's actually, yeah, capacitor would have gone there. Well, I've got the spot for one. Same up this end. Or is it? That's actually labelled P2 and P1. I can't remember what they would be. Okay. Let's open up the bigger one. Now, this is quite fun because you, know, you don't know what you're going to find when you open up something like this. It could be interesting, could be just completely boring, but it does make a mess. So I've got a lovely mess to clean up in a bit. Maybe I could use this as a switch panel for something, who knows. I don't know, I'm not really into doing home electronic projects and whatnot, so... Perhaps before I did this, or perhaps I could put it all back together and send it to um, Big Clive for a teardown or something. Well, I don't really think it's that interesting for a teardown, to be honest. Because someone like Clive knows a lot more about it than I do. I just open it up and go, oh, looky, electronics. Yep, and this one does actually light up. So it did have a light in it. So we've got the buttons there. There was six of them actually installed. Is that where the springs is? Yeah, they are springy. So they touched the exact same switch as I found in computer mice. That's all these are. You open up a um, just a cheap USB computer mouse or any mouse, that's the sort of switch you'll find. There's the LED. And I bet you, if I powered this up, I bet you that's a bloody blue LED. I've got like a light prism, a light block there to help spread the light. Something just fell off. But yeah, there's not really a lot to this panel. I can't see anything on the other side of it. Will that pop out of there? I've got all the screws out. Yeah. Oh. That's not going to work anyway. Look, they vandalised it so much getting it off the wall. They've actually damaged the circuit board. And it's actually gone through one two, three, four, at least five traces that's gone through. So, I could pinch the switches off because I actually quite like those. <laughs> I want to desolder some switches. There's some um, resistor. I've actually, look at that. I've actually shattered a diode this side as well. Oh, a bit heavy handed. The switch just about survived. Look at that. It was close, but it has survived. Alright then. Oh. This head might be useful actually, so I might um, desolder that as well. I can't see nothing on the other side of it though. 
I mean, there's some things that you could salvage off of that if you wanted, like the switches. speaker is not um, secure, uh, screwed in, it's just got like these little um, metal, I don't know what you'd call them, like little washers with like sprung prongs on, so when they go on the plastic stem they sort of grip. That's all it is, so if I just prise that off, and I've got a bit of glue on them as well, and I suppose it's better than just relying on the gripping power of it. Is that going to pop off of there? Come on. Get out of there. There we go. I don't think I've actually got a use for a tiny little speaker like that. Oh! I know what that cable's for. It's just dawned on me. Well, it's only because I can see what it is. It's a bloody microphone, isn't it? Because that's what you would hear the person on the other side with. That's how you talk to them. You ring the buzzer. You talk to them through the microphone, don't you? Like the door buzzer on the block of flat. You know, that would be a speaker in the thing downstairs along with a mic. Can I? Can I actually wiggle that out of there without damaging anything? Was that a really small flathead of mine? There it is. Can I perhaps get that in that gap? There we go. It's got a nice sort of little um, weatherproofing rubber grommet around it as well. well pretty much all this is, this is pretty much just the uh, communication board really, isn't it? If you want to call it that. To communicate with the other end, we've got a bunch of resistors and Capacitors, two adjustment pots, bloody blah, blah blah. There you go. A transparent speaker so you can see how they actually work. That is just a cheap plastic cone, it's nothing special. With the wires, coil underneath it, and your magnet. Speakers are quite simple, really. <clears throat> I suppose the actual sound quality partly comes from what the cone is made of. Because I know a lot of speakers back in the day, they had um, paper cones. And I know some higher end speakers, they have like a rubber um, ring that goes around the edge. It sort of allows the speaker to bounce better. I don't know, I'm not an audio, what they call it, like an audio file, I suppose. I'm, I just know a speaker works when you connect it, or it should work. Right. Oh, this can go in the bin. Need that. Uh, can I get this off of there? When I've wiggled it off, I'll show you what I'm doing and what I want to just have a look at quickly. Oh, I see it. Might be hot snot in action. I think the hot snot was put there for a bit of weatherproofing, but in doing so, I've actually glued the board in. Ow! Ow! That's twice. I thought I'd have learnt the first time, wouldn't you? Come on. Yeah, a bit of brute force. That's it. A bit of brute force like Big Clive does. There we go. It's literally just one tiny little spot of um, hot snot. Actually, I'm not sure that's hot snot. I think that could be silicon. Although it doesn't feel silicony, it does feel like uh, hot glue. But yeah, I just want to look at the traces for that LED. Right there, isn't it? Yep. Looks 
So I was just wondering, because there's a resistor there, so I was just wondering if that resistor was for the LED. I've lost it. Oh, there it is. It looks like there's possibly a diode, because I've just noticed the resistor just goes through a via. Or a via? Ah, yeah it does. Because this is a double-sided board, I've just noticed, so... You have got... Your resistor is actually on this side of the board, you can see it. I don't know if it's going to show up on the camera. And if I do that so it focuses. You've got your resistor, goes across the top there. And then across to your um, LED terminal on the other side of the LED, not the closest one, so the furthest one away. I don't know why they've done it like that. And then a little diode up in the corner. And I'm not sure what that is there, that little blue thing. Maybe a little choke or a little tantalum or something. Anywho, I'm going to leave the video here now. It's like, uh, it's been about an hour, if not a bit more. I'm just looking at a load of junk. <coughs> oh, pardon me. I was trying to um, prevent myself from doing that. It didn't work. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Any comments, suggestions know anything like that in the comments down below and i will uh, talk to you in the next one bye